burrito dance. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Well, hey guys, I'm headed out to do some Christmas shopping because I put off Christmas shopping. Does anybody else? So I'm headed out to do some shopping. I'm gonna go over to the village and I wanna go in the British Isles, mostly because I wanna sniff that Cuba perfume again. Cologne, it's not even a perfume, it's a cologne. And I may step into, they have a stationery store there, Drum Goodles, Drum Goo, Drum Goo, uh, I can't remember what it's called. I wanna go in there. The sun will be going down soon. Maybe we can see some Christmas lights. I'm wearing that Revlon lipstick I mentioned in my best cleanser, but best cleansers for dry skin video. But I'm not wearing the Juicy Tubes on over it. It's by Revlon. And it doesn't feel super drying, but man, it does not really stay on that well. I That's one reason why I don't enjoy wearing like lipstick is that it doesn't stay on. And the long wear formulas dry out my lips to no end. But I like this color. So here it is, but they don't have the sampler out anymore. Bummer. Dark Rose. This is brand Check and Speak. If I'm saying that right. But yeah, the Cuba cologne is really nice. I also like Bay Rum. Maybe I'll spritz that on. Aren't these cool? A magnifying glass. Terribly London. This is T and Alice. Cute little houses. Are those matches? Oh, that's adorable. I think they have quite a few of them. They also have tall, long ones that are in a little soldier. That's adorable. I was eyeing these brushes. I was like, oh, $33. And then I was like, what? $335? Wow, better leave me looking like uh, J-Lo. Also have this Woods of Windsor Lavender, but that's nice. White Jasmine. So I'm in here in the uh, pen shop and this is really a pen lover's paradise, but back here they have all of these specialty inks. <laughs> these are nice pens. These are made out of recyclable bottles. That's cool. Hmm, I've never seen these pilot pens before. Razor point.
the time is now. And you guys, I forgot, was it day seven last week of the advent calendar? Because I, I don't know what my excuse was. I had a brain fart. I definitely missed day seven. And it is a big and juicy one. Juicy, juicy. I would love it if this was a sunscreen, but they almost, I don't think they've ever put a sunscreen in one of these out of my calendars before. So let's do day seven. Oh, I have yours. Ew. Now I am pretty excited about this, even though it's definitely not a sunscreen because check it out. It is a mascara. And do my eyes deceive me? Is that a little makeup remover? Show is. Love it. This kind of looks like, have you guys ever used, Paula's Choice has a makeup remover, or at least they did a while back. Kind of reminds me of that. Just a an oily phase, liquid phase there. I bet this will burn and sting around my eyes. But update on the Charlotte Tilbury lash whatever mascara i don't think i would repurchase it you guys it's not bad but it flakes like none other i just got off the treadmill and it looks like i got punched in the face and i didn't even sweat that much i mean i sweat but not like usually mascara doesn't doesn't do do the uh kate moss circa what was it 92 the lash correcting mascara hyper curling it's by holica holica they used to have an aloe gel had fragrance in it but was not otherwise anything. I remember using it, but I don't remember too much about it. Aloe has compounds in it that are anti-inflammatory. It has compounds called allicins, which may help in improving hyperpigmentation. Unfortunately, most aloe preparations have a lot of fragrance, which can end up causing irritation to the skin that worsens hyperpigmentation. So you have to be careful. And if you get aloe straight from the plant, it does often have little compounds that are irritating it. I can't remember what they're called, but you definitely can develop irritation to aloe. Like I personally find that aloe straight from the plant, it kind of makes me itchy. But like they sell the aloe, you know, around the summertime when people are getting sunburn, that gel, you can take it and put it in an ice cube tray, make little ice cubes. If God forbid you do happen to get sunburn, it's really nice to put that on. All right, so we already did day eight. We did day nine. Did we do day 10? We did day 10. We did day 11. All right, here we are at day 12. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even let you guys guess. It's like the kid that just goes for the pinata without letting other people take a whack at it. Ooh, a hand and foot perfume cream. What is this? What is this? Eleven Village Factory. Ozonic green melon middle note. Ja Boy, they are really building this straight up as fragrance. I kind of appreciate that transparency, not like calling yourself fragrance free and then having like masking fragrance or something. <laughs> which is problematic for people who are allergic to fragrance and need to avoid it. And reading ingredients can be complicated. Shea butter, coconut oil, which is a good emollient for dry skin. It's been shown to be helpful for eczema actually. Glycerin, mineral oil. Y'all, that Bay Rum perfume that I spritzed on myself, I was disappointed. It, it faded really quickly. Okay, this is not moisturizing at all. <laughs> it's like very liquidy. And the perfume is strong. Not a bad sound, but not something I would want in a skincare product. Like, I don't know. It's a little overwhelming if you get my drift. It's a little, it's, it's definitely headache inducing. Here we go with day 13. Not to spoil it for you guys, but I'm just guessing this is some kind of a makeup item. I mean, right? Like maybe, maybe it is one of those SPF powder, uh, pressed powders for, you know, kind of mattifying sunscreen. By the way, sunscreen powders, I don't recommend relying on those as your sole sunscreen because they're not going to give you an even layer of coverage, but they are useful for, if you find that your sunscreen is very shiny, they are useful for mattifying it. Okay. This is day number 13. Oh, sweet. Yes. It is not it is not a makeup product. It is even better. It is a cleansing balm. 
the it's by Maison or Mizon. Remember, I used to use the Mizon snail product, but the Cosrx one is like a much better. All right, this is a Sika cleansing balm. Oh dang! Here we go again. Remember, I was complaining about this last week. The metallic packaging makes it really hard to read the ingredients. It does have fragrance? Moringa seed oil, jojoba seed oil, emulsifiers. I look forward to trying this out, but. Let's see what the packaging looks like. Where's my where's my blade? Gotta go Freddy Krueger in here. Uh, hmm, that's pretty. It's really pretty. It's kind of giving me um, Tiffany's vibes. You know, Tiffany's has that color on their box. Is there gonna be a spatula? Oh yes, I love how the spatula is in this little inset. There you go. All right, I look forward to trying that. Last year, I got the I'm From Fig Cleansing Balm. It did have fragrance, but I really enjoyed that. That came in my that came in my calendar last year, and it was a really good product. All right, that was day 13. Here we go, 14. Ooh, one of my favorite brands. Oh, my God, I spoiled it for you guys. Okay, what do you guys think this is? Kind of suggesting it's a cream. I obviously already know what it is. It is not a cream. It is a sheet mask from none other than Hyun Kang Yul, one of my all-time favorites. I'm not really a regular sheet mask wearer just because I, I'm usually in a hurry. <laughs> I'm having a hard time reading the ingredients on this because of the lighting. Ah, here we go. Better angle. Macadamia. Yeah, tea tree. That can be irritating, although it has been shown to be helpful for acne and um, like psoriasis and... Uh, certain fungal infections. Hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, centella. This looks like it'll be decent. Pyongyang Yule is one of my favorites. Their nutrition cream and their moisture ampule are my faves. Haven't used those products in a while though, actually. But they're really good. At least they were when I was using them. Hopefully they haven't changed around the formula. Although I've noticed that Pyongyang Yule stays pretty consistent with their products. Okay. Day 15, I make sure, ugh, here I go, I keep spoiling it for you guys. What do you think this is? This almost looks like a cleansing balm, but, but then you look at the shape, and it's like no cleansing balm didn't fit in there. Right. It is by iUnique. I got an iUnique uh, propolis sleep mask two years ago in this calendar, and I am not embarrassed to admit, I rather enjoyed it, actually repurchased it on iHerb. But propolis, if you are allergic to fragrance, I do suggest avoiding propolis because it has a lot of um, cross reactions with fragrance allergens. But it that particular product is really good. All right, what does this have in it? Blueberry fruit extract, licorice root, this might be okay. Jojoba seed oil. So this is going to be a facial oil. These types of products I do find useful if you're dealing with a lot of flakiness. You have the compulsion to pick, scratch, exfoliate, what have you. Rather than doing that, take a little oil and rub it on the flaky stuff. It helps to not only moisturize, but it helps to dislodge those flaky, those flaky clumps of skin cells that are trying to shed. I look forward to trying that out. All right, we did 14, 15. We got 16 candles. Although I should say this for tomorrow, slash I'm gonna keep opening, but you guys are gonna see it tomorrow. All right. This is the time machine from like Bill and, not Bill and Ted's, I almost said Bill and Ted's. I'm thinking of, what are the other two guys? Wayne's World Party On. I'm showing my age. <laughs> and this means we're gonna go to the next clip, but I'm gonna keep opening. You're gonna see this footage tomorrow, okay? You know, you guys, honestly, I really don't know to what extent like antioxidants are helpful in cleansers. I would imagine they have, offer a little bit of benefit, you know, that perhaps they help reduce irritation. Honestly, I do not know. I mean, antioxidants, there have been some studies uh, outside of the cosmetic literature, but in the actual dermatology literature, where they attempt to measure the free radical scavenging ability of antioxidant-based skincare products, namely sunscreens. And they show that they don't really work. But here's the thing, measuring 
antioxidant function, the, like the assays, is incredibly nuanced and tricky and you can find a flaw with any type of study looking at that. Um, I'm honestly I'm not the most up-to-date as I once was with those types of assays but I remember from my graduate school days always having journal clubs where we would talk about those at length and people would critique them. All right so that's the size scoop I'm gonna get of this arbitrarily anyways oh I forgot to put a headband on I'm liking the spread on this the scent no joke reminds me of a nice hotel it's actually a pleasant aroma this is doing a good job it's pretty hard to screw up a cleansing balm I think the worst cleansing it was actually a cleansing oil that i tried out a long time ago gosh where what, what was it from i can't even remember the name of it but it was horrible it was so heavily scented it almost went back in your eyeballs and choked you it was that uh, problematic oh man i can't remember what what that was called it was one i reviewed a long time ago anyways i'm gonna hop in the shower and that's that shiny 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 do I look glistening <laughs> I have been doing the I call it stem slugging I put petrolatum a petrolatum ointment to my neck arms and legs and of course around my eyelids those are areas most prone to dryness and I've been using the Cetaphil healing ointment I also have been putting it actually on my feet I haven't been doing yeah it sinks in really well and then the following morning when I wake up my skin is like really soft but by the time I go to bed it's you know, it's absorbed. See, petrolatum ointment, yes, it does form a film on the surface of the skin, but it also intercalates down in between the skin cells and it mimics the intracellular lipids between the skin cells. And that is one of the reasons why it is so good at reducing water loss out of the skin and keeping it hydrated, smooth, and supple. One of the issues that you'll run into if you do this and why it's not a good thing for everyone and why it won't work out well for everyone is that that occlusive barrier, it does slow down the rate of uh, the evaporation of sweat can make you feel overheated, hot, and sticky. So then you want to do, do a cream, which is more lightweight and more breathable. People will ask, well, if you do it on the face, is that going to break you out? Okay, break you out can mean a variety of different things, but if you're talking about acne, no, not exactly. It can cause an irritant folliculitis. Looks like acne, but is not the same thing. Basically, irritation around the pore leads to little bumps. It differs from acne in that it's not going to go on to scar or resolves a lot quicker than acne would. And anyways, so yeah, you can develop that. Some people develop it, other people don't. I've never had that issue if I have done slugging, but honestly, I don't slug my face really ever. I mean, I've done it a few times here and there, but not not enough. It, but it can cause an irritant folliculitis. The term slugging is kind of new. I think because, you know, you kind of look all glistening or whatever, like a slug. So that's where it got its name. But. So it can cause an irritant folliculitis, but as far as clogging pores, no. I mean, it's not comedogenic in the sense that it's not actually going to generate comedones. I mean, there's really nothing in skincare products that is truly comedogenic. Things that are comedogenic are like in crude cutting oils, gasoline, nothing that is gonna be in your skincare products, including petrolatum. Yes, it is petroleum derived, but it is highly refined cosmetic grade. So it's not gonna have in those impurities. Remember, it's like, it's like the analogy of water. Like, your you know drinking water is not the same as the water in the sewer i mean you get what i'm saying same thing with petroleum pet, uh, it's petrolatum in skincare products i mean p-e-t-r-o-l-a-t-u-m so, uh anyways it's a great skin protectant great to reduce chafing and you can do this total body thing but to reiterate yes it can cause an irritant folliculitis people who are more acne prone often you know find it too greasy heavy it can make you feel overheated but if you can jive with it it definitely has benefits anyways <laughs> i'm gonna wrap up the vlog here i hope you guys are having a great weekend whenever you're watching this day night day and night <laughs> but if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye